Hey, everybody, this is Casey hanging out with you here on Penn's Peak Radio and the Wall to Wall Country Show on another great Wednesday, hanging out with you uh, here, uh, playing some of the best country music. You know, that's all about country. And when you think back about country artists, every once in a while, I have a, an honor um, and I'm, I'm just uh, delighted to have somebody who who's got a little bit more knowledge in the country music industry and in the music industry than some of the younger artists that I speak to. And it's always a pleasure uh, to have somebody on board, especially a guy of this kind of caliber. And I think you're gonna, guys are going to be ex- surprised to hear who I have today. I mean, this guy is Texas-born country singer. He's dabbled in acting a little bit. He's definitely uh, got some number one hits that we're going to talk about over the years that you guys are going to remember. And most importantly, something that he's uh, been recognized for years and years and years is uh, a little title, just something you kind of throw around, the original urban cowboy. And we're going to talk to him about why he's called that in just a minute. Please make welcome to the show, Mr. Johnny Lee. Good morning, Casey. How you doing, dear? I am doing awesome. I hope you are uh, having a wonderful day uh, on this Wednesday. I, I am, you know, when they approached me and said, hey, Johnny Lee's given uh, some uh, interviews. Are you interested? I couldn't, I couldn't respond quick enough. I was so excited to have the opportunity to talk to you, sir. It's an amazing thing. Um, you've got a, a world of wealth uh, under your belt buckle, but can we just step back for just a minute? I, I'm I'm so curious a little bit about how you got started in the industry and a little bit about, um, you know, some of the few places that you got your break, uh, specifically maybe a little bit about Mickey Gilly and, and how that all came about. Johnny, can you give us a little background? Well, I started in high school, actually, uh, the, in the FFA, Future Farmers of America, some some guys put a band together in school going to enter a talent contest. And I was raised on a dairy farm in Alta Loma, Texas, which is now called Santa Fe, Texas. Um, and I used to herd cattle and, uh, I'd get out, you know, on the acreage all by myself out there, me and the horse and the cows. And I just sing every song that I knew on the radio. I always knew I wanted to be a singer. I used to watch Ozzy and Harriet, Ricky Nelson, Hmm. And Ricky Nelson inspired me. And uh, I knew I wanted to be a singer, but now getting to be one is a whole different story. And then find <laughs> somebody to pay you to do it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so uh, I, uh, I, I went to audition in the group, and we ended up uh, keeping the band together, playing teen hops and so forth and so on. You know, won all talent contests. In fact, I'm going back in the, uh, uh, this went back the first part of this, this month in November to speak at, I was the honored guest of the alumni from my high school. Wow. And the people, people that knew me back then, you know, they got a big kick out of it because either myself or Daryl Phillips or Billy Holden, if we didn't do it, we knew who did. We was, you know, we all was the troublemakers in school. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, uh, I, I just, I love, Music got into me. I didn't get into music. And then as far as Mickey Gilly goes, well, after high school now, my girlfriend and I, my high school sweetheart and mother made us break up because, you know, after all, I was a singer. She told her, her daughter I was going to end up in prison because <laughs> uh, the mentality of the 50s parent back then, you know. And uh, so after... We broke up. My band broke up. They went off to school, and I went to join the Marine Corps, and I didn't even know Vietnam was going on. Luckily, the Marine guy was gone to lunch, and the Navy guy was sitting across the hall. Had all this gold stuff on his sleeve and on his arm and on his chest. The thing of it is, I didn't know how long it took to get all that stuff, <laughs> but I knew how long it took him to give me a plane ticket to boot camp. <laughs> so after... After after the military, I came back, and uh, I was going to be a cop out in California. I was going to be a highway patrolman. And then I changed my mind about that, came back to Texas, and started doing odd jobs. Then I met this guy named Mickey Gilly. And uh, when I met Gilly for the first time, see, if you was playing in Houston, Texas, it was, uh, it was a big deal, you know. So uh, you were pretty hot stuff. So instead of me... I was, at the time, backing up a little bit, I was playing drums and singing in a trio at an after-hours club. 
in Dickinson, Texas. So uh, I went up to Mickey Gilly and said, hey, man, I know you don't remember me, but uh, I was on a show with you in Galveston, Texas, and uh, I was on before you. You came on after me. But I, I didn't want to leave until I got to hear you play a couple songs. We had another job we had to go to. So instead of me asking him if I could sit in and kind of audition, he figured, you know, well, I must have been good enough to be on the show with him. He said, well, you want to sing a couple songs tonight? I said, oh, sh- sure, I guess so. Yeah, what the heck? So I did, <laughs> and the crowd liked me. I came back a couple other times. Make a long story short, uh, he ended up offering me a job. And so naturally I took it. That was my whole purpose for going up there because if I would have went up there and acted like I didn't know him, which I didn't, uh, and asked him if I could sit in, he would always have that opportunity to say no. Mm-hmm. So uh, after about six months of after my job was pretty secure, I said, Gil, you remember that night I met you? He said, yeah, man. I said, man, I've never seen you before in my life. He <laughs> said, I didn't remember you either, but I didn't want to appear to be rude, you know, so. That's how I got my start. <laughs> I was wondering, I read that uh, part of your story, and I was actually wondering if you eventually told him that you did not know him and, and all of that. Oh, yeah, was, yeah. Oh, that's cool. And he wasn't mad? He was just like, oh, well, whatever. Oh, no, he, he was, he, you know, I, I didn't get mad at him. He didn't get mad. No, we've been we've been closer, closer than most brothers. Awesome. And still are, you uh, know. Yeah, yeah. No, he didn't get mad. He thought it was kind of funny, actually. Well, that's awesome. All the stuff we've been through together. Well, that's so cool. And I, I mean, I have to say, I mean, that th- there's a lot of ways you can break into the industry, um, but uh, that's definitely <laughs> a new one that I think I've heard oh, yeah. um, from other artists. So I found it interesting. But that paved the way for you to do a bunch of things, including getting uh, some screen time. You actually did a little bit of acting here and there. How... Uh, how was that, and 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 do you enjoy that? Did you enjoy it? Do you, do you think you might do some, you know, more at some point, or uh, how did well, how did that go for you? It's interesting that you asked me that. Yeah, I loved it. I, I was real nervous right at first, and I found that there was no reason to be nervous about it, you know. But back then, I was just playing myself, so it was pretty easy to do. But however, I do have a movie coming out, or it just came out in October. Uh, October the 13th, it got released in Atlanta, Georgia. John Snyder with the Dukes of Hazzard. Yeah, 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 I know, yeah, yeah. Uh, he wrote this movie called Four to Go, number four to go. And I play a prison guard. And I'm leading a posse of men looking for four escaped convicts that got life sentences for murder. Mm-hmm. And they think they've uh, arranged an escape from the penitentiary, but they don't know it's been prearranged for them. So one by, and I'm leading a posse of men looking for them, and I'm the only one that knows we're not supposed to find them. And uh, one by one, they start mysteriously disappearing from their little escape plan, and uh, bad things start happening to awesome. them. Awesome. Well, it's it, it, go. If people haven't seen that yet, you need to get the opportunity to go out there and see that movie. Um, and yeah. I, that's kind of cool that John's involved with that, too. So interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a well, good And that's the first time, that's. The first time I've got to really do some acting, you know, as as not being Johnny Lee. Uh, now, well, naturally, when I did the A Team, me and Boy George and Mister T, I was the leader of the Rednecks, but it was still like I was playing myself, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I love the acting part of it. That's good. That's cool. I'm glad you got the chance to step back in front of the camera a little bit. Now, one of the films, though, that really kind of solidified your place in maybe not the acting industry as much, but of course your music industry uh, was the film Urban Cowboy. You want to tell us uh, how that all came around with uh, Mickey Gilly? Well, uh, that's actually uh, based on a true story. There was a Bud and Sissy that met at Gilly's and uh, uh, Aaron Latham from Time Life magazine came down and was doing a story on, on, uh, well, Gillies was a phenomenal. It was, you know, it was one of a kind. He came down to do a story on uh, Texas honky tonks, and accidentally stumbled upon meeting Bud and Sissy in their story, and wrote the Ballad of the Urban Cowboy. Paramount Pictures picked it up, and they decided to do a movie about it. And I had been working at 
with Mickey Gillis since 1969. And um, I just hung in there, you know. I've, I've had some local recordings and regional stuff that I did. And, uh, well, two, two nationwide recordings at that time under my belt. But Irving Azoff, who had the Eagles and Journey and the Go-Go's and Pat Benatar and everybody, heard me sing, and I had Cherokee Fiddle recorded. It was a local hit. And um, so he asked me, did I want to do it in a movie? I said, absolutely, you know. And so that's how it came about. I just, I was working at trying to be successful all them years. And had I ever quit, that never would have happened. So I just happened to be singing that night that Irving Azoff was there, and he, I got discovered. Wow, that's pretty yeah, Then I had to find two more songs to do. I had to re-record Cherokee Fiddle. And uh, ended up, Michael Martin Murphy, the guy that wrote it, ended up singing harmony with me and Charlie Daniels, uh, played the fiddle, and Rosemary Butler, who sings with Jackson Brown, and a bunch of pop acts did the girl part on it. And then I found this little song called Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places, and I changed the music up, and it became, well, a hit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then on the Urban Cowboy 2 soundtrack, I did uh, Mom's Don't Let Your Babies Grow to Be Cowboys with my buddy Mickey Gilly and uh, my theme song, Feel Like I've Been Road Hard and Put Up With. So. <laughs> I just hung in there, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, and sometimes that's what you got to do. You can't get frustrated. You got to believe in yourself and know that there's a place for you. And sometimes you just got to wait for all the little dominoes to fall into place. And it happened for you, you know, producing a, a, a gold record uh, ended up number one. And everybody knows that song, Looking for Love. Uh, I mean, if you start playing it, people are going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that song. Um, Last Saturday night in Texas, there was a little 14-year-old girl got up on the stage. She, her parents brought her out to see me, and she knew every word of my song, so I got her. Uh, and, and kids still, kids even know that song, what yeah. he thought of back then, you know? Yeah. It, so I'm very blessed for the, to have that song. Did you have the opportunity to meet John Travolta or Deborah Winger when that was going on? <laughs> I'm curious. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, sure, I did. Yeah. That's awesome. Deborah and I, I fell in love with Deborah. We dated for a short time after the movie. Oh, okay. And, uh, and she got busy, and I got busy, and it never did. You know, nothing ever happened about it. But uh, yeah, the great, great people. Scott Glenn, the guy that played the bad guy, one of the nicest gentlemen you'll ever run across in your life. You know. Nice. And Uncle Bud, I still stay in touch with him. So, yeah, I, I met all them people. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. You've also been spending some time in front of the camera uh, on RFD TV, uh, places like yep. Larry's Diner and The Homecoming. Is that something that you do pretty often? Are you going to be continuing that? Well, till I die. Okay. All right. And you're doing some celebrity <laughs> hunting and fishing shows, I see, as well. You're doing all, I'll kind of got your fingers into a few things here. Yeah, I got a new book that just came out, too. Awesome. Called Still Looking for Love. <laughs> it's an autobiography, and uh, uh, you know I got a cookbook called Chef Boy R. Lee, <laughs> and, and the movie. And of course, I got a, a CD that just got released oh quite a few months ago called You Ain't Never Been to Texas. And right. I got a warning sign on the front of the CD label that says "Warning: Real Country Music Inside." I saw that. I saw that on the. I saw that on the uh, on your website there. So you've you're still pretty busy. You got a lot of things going on. 2017's been pretty good for you. I mean, obviously you had the movie. If you you know you've got a autobiography, yeah. the cookbook, and of course that album. Most of this stuff people can find it. Uh, is the best place on your website? Is is that the best place to find all these items? And and if they're interested in yeah, any of that's, it, yeah, that's that's the simplest place. I. Had. And I, if they order from my website, I personally will autograph it and mail it to you myself. Aw, that's so sweet. So, that's really, yeah. that's awesome. So, well, you know, we, we'll, Mickey Gilly and I take care of our fans. They take care of us, and they still are after all these years. So, it ain't no big deal. Just get off our butts and do it. Ah, uh, well, you know what? I have to say, I'm very, uh, I have to commend you on that because I think sometimes that falls. Um, I, you know, it falls a little bit sometimes on some of the new artists, you know, they get so busy and they have crazy schedules and I understand all that. 
you know, but they're not uh, always, they're not always up for an interview or they're not always up for, you know, reaching out and meeting some of their fans and stuff. That's, that's their loss. That's their loss. And yeah. it really irritates me to no end. Uh, nobody can ever get too big for their own dead gum britches, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mickey, when Mickey Gilly and I were had number one record after number one record, it didn't matter if we played in the Coliseum or an auditorium or even a nightclub. We, we was always the last ones to leave. We sat there and signed autographs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And these these new people that don't do it, uh, it irritates me. Yeah. It's their loss. Yeah. Yeah. If that was going to, I mean, it sounds like that might be a good piece of advice for some of these newer artists that are out there. Um, is there, is there something else that you feels too? It's like, you know, don't forget about your fans and some other pieces of advice that maybe some of these new artists really need to think about. <laughs> well, they need to really, <laughs> if, they, if, they don't, if they don't think about it, but they're a bunch of dumb asses <laughs> because, uh, because, uh, the fans are, the, the fans is what's going to keep them alive out there, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, you got to you got to take care of them, man. You don't have to, but if you don't want to last very long, it's stupid to work hard and try to be successful, then think you're too good for anybody. Yeah, yeah. You know, find the time. I don't care how busy you are, yeah. you know, nobody could be any busier than me and Mickey Gilly were. Nobody, mm-hmm. and we, you know, because we've been there and we still stayed and signed. That's we awesome. still do. That's awesome. Um, out out and about, uh, Johnny Lee uh, doing some shows still. Going to be doing some more in 2018 as it comes around? Oh, Lord, yeah. I'm already booked up. Uh, I'm not totally booked up for 2018, but the job's already coming in. Mm-hmm. Last year, I did 147 shows. Wow. This year, I'll do well over 100. And, uh, hey, it, the good Lord's blessed me with some with my health and some talent. So I'm going to do, I can't see myself saying, hello, welcome to Walmart. <laughs> I to keep on doing what I'm going to do. You know? Awesome. I, you know, I see a lot of your shows are the Mickey Gilly, uh, uh, theater in Branson, Missouri. I see that you do that a lot, but I also see that you're getting out and doing some other things ever have the opportunity to head up to Northeast Pennsylvania. You could come visit us up here in PA. Well, I'd love to. I used to come up here to Hershey okay. and Lancaster and uh, those, you know, Gilly and I used to travel up whenever somebody, hey, I'll play the garage door opening if they hire me. <laughs> awesome. So, well, so, so they want to see Johnny Lee or Mickey Gilly, uh, them get in touch with our agents and, and get on the internet and we'll come. All right. That sounds like a fine plan. Um, you've got a lot of things going on this year, the album that's out, uh, the movie that's out, your biography, your cookbook. Um, what, what, uh, can you tell me about what, other than some of those shows that you're starting to book in 2018, you got some wink, wink, nudge, nudge, little plans you can maybe share, uh, of what's, uh, what's upcoming for Johnny Lee in 2018? Well, uh, just, you know, random road jobs. And I'm going to do, I know I'm going to do at least one more album. Okay. Uh, I hope, I hope more than one, but uh, right now I'm going to do a new album by the end of 18. Okay. But, uh, and as far as Mickey, as far as Branson, Missouri goes, I'm only working here three days a week in the fall, Sunday night, Monday night, and Tuesday afternoons with Mickey Gilly. Mm -hmm. That way it leaves the rest of the week for us to get on our buses and go out and travel. Awesome. I'm, you know, I'm just going to keep, uh, just keep on doing what I do, man, you know. That's that's wonderful, and I'm glad. I, I really hope you have the opportunity to come up our way at some point. I do, too. I do, too. Uh, the doors to Penn's Peak Radio are open to all of my artists, and at any point in time, you'd be welcome to stop in and do a little impromptu. That would be fun. Bring Mickey with you. <laughs> uh, if, I can get him up, if I can get him up, I'll do it. That would be awesome. Well, Johnny Lee, I don't want to hold you too much longer. I really appreciate your time. We've got a lot of things. Uh, you got a lot of things in the fire for 2017 that your fans um, uh, should know about or will know about uh, for this interview. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, some new music possibly coming out, a, lot of, a, a little bit more traveling in 2018. Uh, are you, uh, are you a social media bug? Uh, are you the, uh, the guy on the uh, Twitter and the Facebook uh, scene? I, you know, 
I know how to get on. I answer what I don't, I've got a band paid my Facebook thing. My daughter's trying to teach me how to do all that stuff. I get on. I know how to reply. <laughs> I get a lot of. I've got quite a few thousand followers, so it's impossible for me to. You know, I'm not going to stay on the phone all day long. Right. Right. And reply, but I I try to get back to everybody that I can personally. All right, awesome. So, well, that's awesome. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, with the new stuff, I'm sure some of your fans are excited about it, and um, you know, being looking forward, oh, yeah. looking forward for all of that. Um. I, I, again, I don't want to hold you. I want to thank you for your time, sir. It's an honor and a pleasure to meet the original urban cowboy, Mr. Johnny well, Lee, you. and have you on my show. If anybody missed it, I'm going to play some of your songs, too. And, of course, you know, some of the some of the ones that, you know, everybody knows uh, from the urban yeah. cowboy uh, soundtrack. But some of the others like Hey Bartender and a few of the others we will play some of them throughout the afternoon. Remind everybody, you know, exactly what your style is, that great classic country sound and. Um, uh, this whole show gets uh, recorded and played back on Sunday. So if any of your fans missed it, they'll have the opportunity to uh, catch it on Sunday morning. Well, and I want to invite everybody to come see us anytime they can, where we're going to be. Go to my website, the official Johnny Lee.com or Johnny Lee music.com. It's got my schedule on it, my touring schedule. And, uh, you get a copy of the book. Uh, hopefully, uh, get a copy of the new movie called four to go. Mm-hmm. and uh, appreciate you keeping our music alive. And I like the idea that if anybody does order anything from your website, you personally take the time to sign it for them, which is, which is yes, I, do. I hate to say, kind of unheard of. So I think that's amazing, and kudos for you to continue to, to honor your fans that way. I hope you have safe travels, my friend. I'd hope to see you sometime up here, but we'll keep in touch. And when you do get some of that new music out, maybe we'll chat with you again in 2018. But thank you for your time, sir. It's truly, truly an honor. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Take care, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.